What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. So we have a concerning new report that the next pandemic could come from meat, the U.S. meat supply. Take a look here. This is, this is very serious. Take a look. The next pandemic could spring from the U.S. meat supply, a new report finds, and this comes from a new report from the Harvard Law School and New York University. Pretty prestigious places examining how humans and livestock and wild animals interact here in the United States. Many familiar and terrifying diseases originate in animals, including HIV, AIDS, Ebola, the Zika virus, pandemic flu virus, and the C-19 virus. Some started in other countries as well, typically on the African or Asian continents. These so-called zoonotic diseases are often blamed on poor hygiene, lack of government oversight, or unsafe practices in those places. While Americans often think it couldn't happen here, regulations are so loose and in interactions so frequent, researchers found that a virus or other contagious bug could easily jump from animals to people in the U.S., sparking another deadly outbreak. Quote, there really is this false sense of security and unfounded belief that zoonotic disease is something that happens elsewhere and couldn't happen here in the U.S., but, well, we just went through a massive pandemic, said Ann Linder, one of the report's lead authors and associate director of policy and research with the Brooks McCormick Jr. Animal Law and Policy Program at Harvard Law School. Quote, in fact, I think we're more vulnerable than ever in many ways. The report, also led by NYU's Center for Environmental and Animal Protection, highlights several areas of vulnerability, including commercial farms where millions of livestock come in close contact with each other and their handlers, and wild animal trade in which animals are imported with few or no health checks and fur trade in which minks and other animals are bred for their coats with little safety oversight. And, you know, really, if you just think about the practicality of this with millions of animals, no matter if they're cows, chickens, mink, whatever the animals are, who's to say that there wouldn't be a few infected animals for no matter what it is, mad cow disease, anything, right? How would you possibly be able to check that, find that? I mean, we literally just had a uh, massive bird flu that happened here over the last couple of years, and um, millions of birds were called and died, and that is what caused the price of eggs to rise here. And people didn't stop eating eggs. I mean, this this happened. If you've been following my channel, if you heard this on the news. Uh, we did actually have millions of birds, different kind of birds, actually, die from a massive bird flu, okay? And nothing was contained. People kept right on eating eggs, right on eating chicken, turkey, and all sorts of things. Uh, this easily could have spread to us. Yeah, something to keep in mind, right? Through globalization, we've erased seas and mountains and other natural boundaries of disease, says Linder, an expert in law and animal, animal policies. We're mixing animals and pathogens across different continents and circulating at a dizzying and ever-increasing pace. About 10 billion land animals are raised in the U.S. Wow a number which is increasing by about 200 million per year, according to the reports. Pigs and poultry, for instance, are raised in high numbers in the U United States more than anywhere else in the world, the report found. 
and are the most likely vectors for a particularly lethal outbreak of the flu or the flu virus. Remember, that is a virus. Industry representatives were quick to defend the safety of their practices, saying, quote, according to the CDC, the likelihood of spreading an avian disease to a human in the United States is extremely rare. But remember, extremely rare doesn't mean it can't happen. Workers on pig and poultry farms are particularly vulnerable because of a lack of regulations protecting them, said an associate professor of law and director of the Animal Law and Policy Institute at Vermont Law and Graduation School in Royalton. Quote, there's virtually no regulation on, of on-farm raising animals. There's limited regulation on the slaughterhouse but it is extremely inadequate and it's getting worse. Right now, the federal government is deregulating slaughter rather than increasing oversight. And because the mink and larger fur industry does not produce fur, it is even less regulated. Quote, proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences found that mink, more so than other farm species, pose a risk for the emergence of future disease outbreaks and the evolution of future pandemics. Other studies have shown that mink are susceptible to SARS-CoV-2, the viruses that causes COVID-19, and outbreaks that were detected on 18 American mink farms during the pandemic for the first two years. At least four Americans, two of, two of whom worked on mink farms, were believed to have been infected by those animals. Also, about 220 million live wild animals are imported into the United States every year for pets and other purposes, many without health or safety checks. If someone wants to bring a dog or cat into this country, there's a process. But if I'm a wildlife importer and I want to bring 100 wild mammals from South America, I can do that with very little regulation of any kind. Perhaps the earliest Ebola case, which sparked the outbreak in West Africa from 2013 to 2016, was blamed on bushmeat. It's illegal to import bushmeat to the United States but it's not illegal to import the same live animals that bushmeat comes from. There are wide gaps in the system. So much of this hidden from the public view, there's so much we don't know because we're not monitoring. Uh, yeah. Uh, they're concerned about how much money the government spends subsidizing and protecting industries that they believe the American public is at risk. They hope Congress will take advantage of this year's reenactment of the Farm Bill to limit subsidies and impose new safety regulations on animal industries. Don't we see the writing on the wall? Scientists are telling us there's a looming threat of zoonotic outbreak that could make COVID look like a cakewalk, and we're still just ignoring it even after what we've gone through over the last couple of years. Yeah, yikes. And remember, we have had larger pandemics in the history of the world than this last COVID here, including, well, really AIDS has been larger because AIDS has had a death toll of about 36 million people. The Spanish flu of 1918, which largely was considered to stop World War I uh, and actually was considered to take more lives than World War I, had a death toll of estimated between 20 and 50 million and largely was considered, as I said, to end World War I. 
because that's how brutal it was. Uh, the mortality rate was estimated between 10 to 20 percent of all people that caught the virus. Yeah, and remember, we actually had a lot less population back then. So consider 20 to 50 million people dying from that virus. And number one, the Black Death, also known as the bubonic plague, which most people have heard of. This was back in the 1300s. And if you've heard of it now today, I mean, this was 700 years ago almost. Um, and people still know about it today. That's how bad it was that you know about it today. And it was 700 years ago. This was estimated to kill between 75 to 200 million people. And remember that um, we didn't have the population that we have, you know, back then. It was like crazy. It was estimated to kill. I think almost half of the population on Earth, okay? Remember that the C-19 COVID uh, only killed up to about 7 million people currently. The bubonic plague killed between 75 to 200 million people. Yeah. So remember that we have actually had viruses and plagues that were a lot, lot worse. So conspiracy theory or not, these have happened. So no matter who you want to blame or what, the government or whatever your theory is or not, these have actually happened in the past. So they can actually be a lot worse. So let me know your thought here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here with everything. Hopefully we don't see any more worse in the future, but we need to kind of control some things hopefully for the better. So if you haven't yet, subscribe down below, click the bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos that come out here on our YouTube channel every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for liking and sharing these videos. Click here to see the White House may have to intervene on a major, major issue, or people are in shock at what is happening at McDonald's. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.